Hello and welcome to our presentation on the conflict over two contested hydropower dams, the Ipupa and Baines dams initiated by Namibia and Angola. It's called Making Waves on the River Konene. My name is Jeroen Warner from Wageningen University in the Netherlands and the next voice you'll hear is Richard Meissner from CSIR Pretoria in South Africa. We will be discussing the conflicts in its various stages and the protest over the dams by indigenous population. Good morning, my name is Richard Meissner. I'll be talking to you in this slide on the hydraulic mission surrounding the Kuneni River Basin. Cooperation was laid down during the colonial period when Namibia was controlled by South Africa and Angola by Portugal. Three treaties were signed, one in 1926, one in 1964, and a third in 1969. In the 1970s and 80s, there was a big drive for decolonization by both Namibia and Angola. Angola um, gained independence in 1975, uh, which resulted in a civil war breaking out and South Africa invading Angola. In 1989, a peace treaty was signed between South Africa and Namibia. South Africa pulled back from Angola and also uh, decided that uh, uh, it, won't, it will no longer hold at, uh, uh, um, administrative powers over Namibia. And in 1990, Namibia gained independence, but the energy dependency on South Africa's Electricity Supply Commission was still intact. Namibia then came up with plans to look towards the Kuneni River uh, to revive it as an energy hub in the Southern African Development Community. In 2015, Penny Harvey and Hannah Knox drew our attention to the enchantments of large infrastructural projects such as hydropower dams. They promised development and the serving of the public good as well as the stabilization of unruly forces, whether it be societal or natural. And certainly to the initiating governments of Angola and Namibia, there was plenty to attract the initiation of large infrastructure. National development, generating foreign currency from renewable energy rather than importing fossil-based electricity generated by a former colonizer, South Africa, as well as a physical bridge over the river Kunene, which is a border river uh, between Angola and Namibia. So when in 2005, South Africa had to default, its ESCOM company could not supply the contracted amount of electricity. It was almost a no brainer to go ahead with the Baines Dam in 2008, even though that would be flooding dwellings and grazing lands of the nomadic people uh, who were pastoralists in the Konena region, the Ova Himba and the Ova Zimbla. For them, the public good was not so good. And clearly it was not the public that the governments had in mind when they promised development. In 2015, Penny Harvey and Hannah Knox drew our attention to the enchantments of large infrastructure projects such as hydropower dams. They promise the public good being served by development and the stabilization of natural or societal unruly forces. And certainly there was a lot to attract the Namibian and Angolan governments to uh, start with these suite of dams on the River Kunene. Of course, national development, but also it is a physical bridge over a border river connecting also symbolically the two countries, Angola and Namibia. Also, there's a promise of foreign currency being generated from renewable energy rather than having to pay for imported fossil-based electricity from South Africa, the former colonizer. So there was plenty to, um, to speak for the starting of the Baines Dam, especially when in 2005, South Africa had to default on its delivery of energy through its ESCOM company in, uh, due to a dry year. 
However, the unruly forces that lived in the Kunene region were clearly not part of the public good that the government had in mind. Their dwellings and grazing lands would be flooded by the reservoir to serve the Baines Dam. And they clearly were not considering that they were being taken into account as a public for the public good. Protesting dams. Shortly after independence, Namibia decided to embark on a number of hydropower plants on the Kuneni River. In the early 1990s, it proposed the Ipupa Dam. Environmental and indigenous interest groups, particularly the Ovahimba, protested against the dam. They also received international support from numerous interest groups and NGOs from around the world. Norway and Sweden funded the feasibility study. Even so, contractors got cold feet due to the protests against the dam, and the dam was shelved in the mid-2000s. However, the environmental impact assessment identified alternative locations. Baines was one of them, since it was found less damaging than Ipupa. In the early 2010s, Namibia decided on implementing the Baines Dam. Again, the Ovahimba, and this time the Ovazimba, protested against the dam. In 2012, they wrote an open letter invoking the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, stating that the dam is threatening their cultural security. They also proposed alternative power sources such as solar power. Let's take a step back now to consider the definition of infrastructures by Larkin. He has it that infrastructures are matter that enable the movement of other matter. These two dam projects, Epupa and Baines, certainly enabled the mobilization of various actors against the projects. Not only was it a cause celebre for the oppositional DTA to slam the ruling Swapo party in Namibia, but it also mobilized global public opinion. Already in 1997, the Himba leader Kapika successfully reached out to the uh, NGO in Germany who invited him to come to Europe, which in turn had an effect on the willingness of Norway and Sweden to support this project. In Act Two, as we heard, the Himba and Zamba successfully mobilized UN Indigenous Peoples Convention to protest the dam projects. And we also heard that they mobilized knowledge for alternative energy production. That is to present solar energy as a viable alternative to the hydropower to be produced by the Baines Dam. Act three, an unexpected turn. In 2014, Chief Kapika changed his mind regarding the Baines Dam. Was he bribed? He joined the Southwest African People's Organization, Namibia's ruling party, in advocating for the Dame's Baines hydropower project. He also advocated the economic benefits the dam would bring to Kahuku land and the Ovahimba and Ovazemba peoples. In November 2014, Angola and Namibia agreed to scrap the Ipupa Dam and to go ahead with Baines. In 2020, they agreed to fast track Baines. In 2021, construction will start on the Baines Hydropower project, which will last four years. This bemusing about face on behalf of the Himba leader also calls to mind a reference we made earlier to the work by uh, Harvey and Knox 2015 on how the meaning of the public and good is not stable over time. When we started our presentation, there was a neat opposition, a juxtaposition between what the Namibian government initiating the Epupa and Baines Dam saw as the national interest and the public good, and what the opposing indigenous groups, the Himba and Zemba, saw as their survival. For Namibia, the project was so important, so key to the national interest that a Namibian minister said 
those against the Epupa Dam are misguided and disloyal, equating criticism of the Epupa Dam with criticism to Namibia. That is a, an example of economic securitization, where the dam is a life and death issue to the survival and the development of the Namibian state. We can contrast that to how the Himba and Zemba saw this. They saw the project as an example of land grab. They saw no local benefit in their area being flooded. And what they saw as their kitchen, the region of Kauko land, being flooded so that they could no longer feed themselves. They would lose their livelihoods and their natural resources. They also saw it as a threat to their culture. They securitized the cemeteries, the graves in which their ancient their forebears were buried and would be flooded. The ancestral lands on which they have roamed for, uh, for centuries and the spiritual significance of the area. That would all go to waste if the project was to go ahead. But when within a very short time, certainly the headman of the Himba changed his mind and switched to the Namibian securitization, equating the project, the, the Baines Dam, with the economic development and their survival of his people, suddenly the meaning of the public good for the Himba changed. We cannot assume a continuity and uh, re resort to diagrams that oppose the positions of pro and contra arguments, even put to the point of supra political securitization without impunity. So, this more conceptual message comes out of our case. Which which we, <laughs> which, 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 which. The surprising about face on behalf of the Himba leader calls to mind the literature which, to which we referred earlier. That is, Harvey and Knox's Enchantments article, in which, among many other things, they claim that publics and goods are not stable over time. And this is a good example of that. When we started our presentation, there was a nice juxtaposition, clear cut between the Namibian government initiating the Epupa and later Baines dams, and the Himba and later also Zemba people opposing it. The dams were so important to the Namibian government that the Namibian minister was quoted as saying that those who turned against the Epupa dam are misguided and disloyal in which disloyalty to the dam project was tantamount to being disloyal to Namibia. An example of economic securitization as well, where the survival of Namibia is predicated on the survival of the dam project, bringing development to the Namibian economy. For the indigenous people opposing the project, the project was a clear example of land grab which would bring no local benefit to the people in Kaoko land. They also made it uh, subject to cultural securitization. That is, the area has such spiritual significance. It is their ancestral land on which they have roamed for hundreds of years. And it holds their cemeteries of their forebears, who would all be flooded, the cemeteries and the land which is also their kitchen from which they get their food. If that would all go to waste, that would also mean dooming the survival, at least the cultural survival, of the Himba and Zemba people. That was all clear cut, but then after Hedman Kapika changed his mind, suddenly took the securitization discourse of the Namibian government, then the dam became the core of the survival of his people rather than the destruction of his people. A 180 degree turn 
in the discourse. And with that conclusion, we end this presentation. And also on behalf of Richard Meissner, I thank you very much for your kind attention.